WCNC TV Charlotte. This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide and the tough questions get asked and answered. Good Sunday morning. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Joining me today, Charlotte City Councilman Lawana Mayfield and former City Councilman and former State Representative Andy Doolin. Friends of the show, thank you both. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you. It has been a week since the shootings in El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio. Last Saturday afternoon, a gunman stormed at Walmart in El Paso, killing 22 people, injuring another 20. The accused shooter drove 10 hours from Dallas to El Paso, which is a border town. Before the shooting, a document reportedly written by the accused shooter was posted online. The message was anti-immigrant, anti-government, anti-big corporations. The author claimed to have developed these beliefs before Trump's presidency. Then just hours later, a gunman wearing body armor opened fire outside a popular bar in Dayton, killing nine people, including his younger sister. Police still trying to figure out the motive for that shooting. I want to get an, your initial reactions to the two shootings. Lilana, we'll begin with you. Pain and sadness that we keep having this conversation over and over regarding mass shooters and the way that mass shooters are portrayed is opposed to calling them what they are because that is a terroristic act. So opposed to calling them terrorists, we try to soften the language when the individual is white and has a gun and we really need to have serious conversation about gun control. With these terrorists? Oh, absolutely homegrown terrorists, you know, and at city council level, at state level, at the national level, you swear an oath to uphold the Constitution against foreign and domestic terrorists. Now, these guys, uh, you know, everybody talks about mental health, and we'll talk about that yeah. over the next 30 yeah. minutes. Uh, these guys are sick, in my opinion, but the guns did not kill those people. Those but men and individuals killed those people. And I agree because I'm a, gun, I'm a registered gun owner. Yeah. So therefore, I am a fan of having a full and complete background check. But I'm also not Great. going, and I grew up in a household of guns. My father was a hunter. So there's a respect that you have for guns. That's not the conversation regarding a comprehensive background check and not making it so easy for every individual especially if they have mental health or domestic violence in their background or clear signs of assault for them to get access to wanna, a high-powered weapon. I want to okay. get to both of those in a second. I just want to touch one more point on uh, Mr. Trump's visit there this past week. It, there was a lot of emotion as Mr. Trump visited the victims and survivors in both Dayton and El Paso this week. The White House saying it was important for the president to extend his condolences and to thank first responders. However, some local lawmakers said they didn't think the president should be visiting, especially El Paso, because of his divisive rhetoric when it comes to immigrants and undocumented workers. Of course, again, that is a border town. Uh, Andy, let me ask you, you know, regardless of who the president's been, often the title consoler in chief is used. But when it's someone like Mr. Trump, who has been inflammatory when it comes to the issues along these border towns, um, and also on these same days this past week, was picking fights with the presidential candidates, was picking fights with cable news anchors. Um, was picking fights with members of Congress at the same time he was down there. Did his presence help? Uh, well, I've heard on the radio just this morning that, yeah. that he did indeed help lots of folks that were in the hospital. They didn't take any pictures of the private meetings yeah. he had with those family members that are, are still, there are 30-something that are still injured. Yeah. Uh, I think it helped, and it helped those people in personal ways. Uh, as far as him being inflammatory, I don't think he's picking fights, but he's not going to let anybody step on him, and he's not going to let anybody step on the United States of America or our flag or our border. And so I support what he's doing to support and build up that border. Now, does he play like a New York City developer in the big leagues? Yeah, he sure does. But every time somebody throws a punch at him, they typically get one coming back. What about the fact that he throws most of the punches? That's the equivalent of a bully being the one to attack someone, and then when that person does actually start to defend themselves, then they want to go off in a corner and cry and say, oh, everybody's so mean to me. Because in <laughs> essence, he's a bully, and he throws out inflammatory comments. He has created a level of rhetoric that when you say, the good old days and make something great again and you're really tying in to a time that let's be honest goes back to a time of slavery where 
everyone but white people were Come people on, who, Moana. let's have a real Come conversation on. about it, Andy, because his language is very inflammatory. The comments that he makes are very derogatory. He has been a race baiter multiple times. And then to say someone who is a terrorist and say, well, there's fine people on both sides, that is not the role of a president because you are, just as the previous president, a president of the United States. That is a president of all people, not a president of select people and just blowing a dog whistle wanna, for those few I, I, people. I want to focus on, on some of the issues uh, before us today as far as guns go because in the wake of the shootings this week, North Carolina lawmakers pushing for even harder, stricter gun laws. Right now, there are two bills in the General Assembly that would change gun laws in North Carolina. The Gun Violence Protection Act would require a permit for all guns purchased in the state and set a three-day waiting period. It would also set a minimum age of 21 to buy an assault rifle and ban high-capacity magazines. The red flag law would allow a judge to take temporarily away someone's guns if they're found to be a danger to themselves or others. The governor, Democratic lawmakers, and UNC Charlotte shooting survivor Drew Piscaro called on legislative leaders to stop bottling up bills that could stop a similar shooting from happening here. I get it. You can have a gun. But there are, there are many things that need to be changed in terms of gun laws, such as the ammo capacity, such as bump stocks. I mean, the list goes on. North Carolina, one of four states considering red flag laws now. 17 states in the District of Columbia already have some sort of red flag legislation. Andy, what laws, uh, I, I know the Republican Party has, has been resistant when it comes to some of the, the gun issues because of Second Amendment concerns, which everybody I think understands. What laws do you think there is an appetite for out there, though? Well, I haven't had a personal conversation with leadership, the Republican sure. leadership in Raleigh. Personally, by the way, uh, I don't own a gun, yeah. but I think everybody's right to own a gun. You ought to be able to. And if you're a gun owner, to me, the number one gun ownership is to protect your home. And if somebody breaks into your home, you ought to be able to light them up. You yeah. know, I mean, absolutely light them up. Now, as far as the red line uh, legislation that's on there, there's something. If you want to, if you want to make it 21 to purchase a, a high-powered rifle. Fine. Extra extra background uh, checks, fine. Universal Three day back, wait period. Universal background fine. checks. Yeah, I don't know the exact uh, line by line items that are in a universal yeah. background check, but you know, if should I go everyone, if, if I go to buy a, a firearm, I would expect somebody to look into my background to see if I was legitimate to have that. And I think it needs to be more than three days because there's still a delay. Because remember, one of our previous shooters because it took almost five, six days, if they had a full week, a full business week of time to investigate and get and retrieve all the information, they would have realized that that individual actually did have some red flags go up for why they should not become a gun owner. So having these expedient ways to get access, if you're a true, a true gun owner, go through the process complete your application, send off of your background check. It should not make a difference whether it's three days or a week for you unless you plan on doing some major shooting in the next couple of days. You should yeah. be okay and you should support the idea of anything having a full week. Anything wrong with what she's saying? Not completely because, for instance, if a guy wants to go dove hunting in September, well, it's the first of August. Sure. He's got plenty of time to go get his Sure. His paperwork exactly. in order to go dove hunting with his buddies. I would have to do that because I don't own a gun. Um, but in what you said is one of the problems because, regardless of whether it's city council, Republican and Democrat discussions, state house, state senate, or in the United States House, the United States Senate, it's the details where people can't get together. Always. And we've got to get them together to make the details. We're going to give, let's say it's three days. OK, we'll give you a week. Now, what are you going to give us back? Sure. I don't, it's the negotiation. The problem is, is now that we've actually had to come to this, uh, we in the media are having to decide what the term mass shootings mean. Gun Violence Archive, which is frequently cited by us and by the press, defined a mass shooting as at least four people being shot. Using this definition, there have been 255 mass shootings so far this year as of this taping. Mm -hmm. However, another definition of 
mass killing is when at least uh, three people are dead or killed. Using this definition, though, there have been roughly 31 mass shootings in the U.S. because the shooting at the UNC Charlotte would not fall under that definition. Mm. We're already at that point. And I want to take a look at some mass shooter statistics. Between 2000 uh, and 2015, almost 60% of mass shooters have been Caucasian. Less than 20% have been African American. Less than 10% have been la Latino. And when it comes to age, the most common between the age of 21 and 30, second most between the age of 41 and 50. And when it comes to gender, almost all have been male. Got to get in a break, but quick reaction to those numbers. We love to say the numbers don't lie. So let's change the conversation about who a mass shooter is. Those numbers are pretty standard. I mean, we see those over and over and over again. And by the way, one is too, too much. Yeah. More flash one after this.